Once again, the time of ghost ghouls and all other kinds of terrifying things has come upon us. Halloween is one of my favorite times of the year, from getting candy, to partying, and of course, reaping havoc for the Dark Lord Satan. However, as I mentioned last year, All Hallows Eve has never been a great time to be a Power Rangers fan. You all know my beef for the clip show formula, but I am more optimistic after last year's Christmas and Halloween specials, so let's go ahead and knock out the first clip show of the season, episode 15, Trick or Trial. The episode opens with Poisandra and Curio watching an infomercial of a monster that doubles as a bounty hunter of sorts called Scumlaw, who watches along, saying that the commercial has been running for over 65 million years. Fury comes in, reprimanding the two for hanging out with the prisoner, and after he leaves, Poisandra decides to hire the monster to round up the rangers. Man, we really rushed into this anti-plot. Cut to Ivan and Kendall skipping through the city, talking about going trick-or-treating, when they come across the other rangers who are face-to-face -face with Scumlaw and his duo of bailiff mummies. But you'd never guess that, since none of them feel the need to pose or even look worried about it. Scumlaw zaps the rangers with a teleportation ray before instructing his undead posse to find purple and gold. Scumlaw goes to deal with the already captured rangers, but drops his evil sub... Pina? When he teleports, Kendall and Ivan pick up the page and just run off with nothing better to say than uh-oh. The rest of the team end up warping to a courtroom where a group of three judge lanterns tell them that they've been accused of killing innocent monsters. And then Chase starts to talk. Innocent monsters? You're joking, right? We were protecting the Earth. Silence! Yeah, no kidding. I mean, my gosh, they're gonna have you keep those in during the rest of the episode, aren't they? A witch, that I guess is just there because it's a Halloween episode, explains to the Rangers that every time they're found guilty, they'll get a strike, and after accumulating enough strikes, they'll be destroyed. Because, you know, that's how it works with humans, kids. Nobody ever gets sentenced to death after just one conviction. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh. Scumlaw finally comes in, calling for his first witnesses, Ninja and Hunter, and this is the formula for the clip show. Random monsters get called to testify against the Rangers. It's something, I guess. The Rangers object to Ninja, recounting how he turned Tyler into a T-Rex, but on deaf ears. The judges unsurprisingly find the defendants guilty and give them a strike for each monster. Back at the lab, Kendall and Ivan are having no luck figuring out where the other Rangers are and... Keeper? What are you doing here? I realize that most of the team is missing, but... Was this plot really that important? Actually, Keeper explains that the paper they found was from the Halloween Intergalactic Court, and I have so many questions, but more on that later. Keeper goes on to say that Scumlaw has never lost a case, when Kendall figures out that Scumlaw is cheating the court by remembering when she heard him say he was cheating the court, and Keeper says that the only way to get into court is by being arrested. I've said court so many times it's lost all meaning. Ivan says that they can't help if they're also on trial, but Kendall says she has a plan. We cut back to the courtroom, where Scumlaw calls on Gold Digger and Spellbinder, at which point Tyler asks why the rangers don't also get to call on witnesses, but the judges dismiss him and go right into the recap of Breaking Black. And I'm not gonna lie, this was actually a pretty cool scene. Afterwards, Spellbinder goes on to explain their dual involvement as Spelldigger by saying they were passing out coins of the city. The team tries to tell the room that the coins have been cursed with greed, and yet again are completely brushed over, and the rangers get three more strikes for three more monsters extinct. Ivan and Kendall begin implementing their plan to get captured by playing dumb and Ivan quoting Shakespeare, saying he was a good friend. Even though he he was trapped for 800 years and Shakespeare died in the 1600s, you know what, never mind. The bailiffs show up and tell the pair they're under arrest before two other figures ambush them. Back in the court, Ice Age, Stingrage, and Meteor are next to testify and I don't know how much more of this I can take. We get to see all the fight scenes for the monsters that we already saw last season and during the clip show last year before getting to anything from this season. Ice Age getting flung by Rexy, Ice Age freezing the rangers, honestly it gets kind of boring even when we get to see Koda fight the other rangers, which was one of my favorite moments moments from last season. But moving on. We call back on Stingrage making the rangers lose their memories and the scene of finding the Plesiosword with Dr. Runga before the jury calls for the final five strikes because we don't have time for any more witnesses to have the strike system actually make sense and the crew is sentenced to vaporization. Kendall and Ivan are brought into court by the bailiffs and immediately call to unmask the jury because pacing doesn't exist. They reveal the jury to be Curio, Poisandra, and some Vivix, much to the dismay of Scumlaw, who begins yelling at the guards for betraying him, at which point they reveal themselves to be Prince Philip and Tyler's dad. Mr. Navarro? James? I don't care. The Judge Pumpkins find the Rangers innocent for the jury being rigged and sentence Scumlaw to be vaporized instead. Scumlaw runs off and the Rangers offer to take care of Scumlaw themselves and are released to do so by the Smashing Pumpkins. The Rangers meet up with Scumlaw in the city, where we get to see a full nine Ranger team morph and a fight scene that nobody cared about. I mean, the puns don't even make sense! Uh, this fight is an open and shut case! What? Talk about poetic justice! What? 
You're gonna have a hard time beating this rap! Oh come on! That was meant for the Christmas clip show and you know it! Scumlock calls on some Vivazords to set up the Megazord fight and you can probably guess how invested I am. Tyler, Coda, and Chase attack Scumlaw on the ground while the T-Rex and other individual Zords do in the Vivazords. Scumlaw is met by the full team who finish the bounty hunter lawyer monster with one final strike. Yep, no Megazord fight this episode. Gotcha. Poisandra and Curio make it back to the ship, where the pair make their way onto the bridge and see a set of jack-o'-lanterns and immediately run off in fear. Turns out, the pumpkins were carved by a group of Vivix and Fury, who knocks a few henchmen aside and slices his face into a pumpkin. What happened to you, man? At the cafe, the rangers are just now mentioning a party they had planned to attend when the mummy cops come in to take the rangers back to court, but we all know it's James and Philip, so I'm just gonna stop right here because this is basically how it ends anyway. This episode is not a good one. I know I should probably hold clips shows to a much lower standard than the rest of the season, especially since we know that the clip shows aren't in continuity with the show, but that doesn't mean the plot shouldn't make sense. Everything feels so rushed at first, not really explaining anything, and with no setup, the plot just crumbles beneath a ton of questions. Like, can the courtroom see the clips? Are they flashbacks, or are they coming out of the random witch's cauldron? This is obviously some high authority of the galaxy if Keeper knows about them, so why wouldn't the rangers be allowed to defend themselves? How come every time the rangers tried to speak, we replayed the bite of the guy saying, SILENCE! But if we're going to talk about the episode itself, my biggest complaint by far is how long the clips are. They go on forever, and I don't mean they drag, I mean I caught myself thinking I could have been just watching the episode again. I guess, overall, this episode proves to me that Supercharge is not as good as Dino Charge. Last year's Halloween episode was more believable, better written, and much more entertaining, and for that reason I cannot recommend this episode. I'm Nick, aka IronBat1993, and may the power protect you.